good morning and welcome to it is still winter out there Winnipeg minus 8.7 this morning okay enough about the weather what's happening here now okay I think I'll have to recompose so I can better describe uh, today we're going to continue on with our model uh, we're going to try not to get too sidetracked with uh, pen stuff the sprue the the model ship sprue parts pen <laughs> I'll get it I'll get it worded right yet anyway what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show the connection between the the model ship and uh, oh I see she she caught her dog okay uh, yeah the, the dog got away and was running down the street all by itself there okay and enough about the dog doesn't take much to get me sidetracked does it <laughs> a dog walks down the street or a truck drives by and now I just completely lose my train of thought anyway yeah so where was I yeah I was saying that I'm trying to sh constantly show the connection between the model ship and the pen because this is called the model ship <laughs> Part number, what are we at? 15, 1519, uh, I think, today? Yeah, I think this, this is 1519. Wow. <laughs> okay, enough about that. Oh, uh, one thing I wanted to uh, mention. I, I watched uh, uh, Peter in Oscale Modeling with his uh, Yamato, and he is really coming along. I, <laughs> obviously, he's not videoing little every little aspect of it. Uh, and he's doing a great job. He tried out a different type of paint. Can't remember the name of it. Um, kind of, kind of a funny name. Maybe it's just an Australian brand. I don't know. Anyway, you you might want to check out his build there. That that's going to be one really impressive ship when he gets it done. Uh, yeah, and and the beautiful birds they got there in Australia. Wow! It puts my rabbits to shame. <laughs> Okay, let's recompose here and I'll just quickly describe what's going on with, with our uh, pen stuff and then we'll get on with the USS Iowa. <laughs> hey, it's longer than the, than the Yamato. Yeah, it's longer. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so let's try and keep everything in the field of view here. All right, first of all, last night, and I'm not going to go into a bunch of details again, but I took the barrel trimmer or pen mill, depending, people call it different things, and I cleaned up the ends of the pen blank here, okay? Now, I'm just going to quickly assemble this thing here. Now, this is the way I do it. <coughs> Now, I just know that I'm going to have a pen turner uh, who is going to comment and say, Ron, with this type of mandrel and, and this, this type of life center, you don't need to use the nut. Okay, do not give me that comment. Because using the nut more than doubles the... the uh, tightness you might say on on the on the mandrel so that if you if the chisel is going in a little bit too hard or this is a little bit too loose it will not slip okay it so yeah I know I don't need the nut I know that normally this can go on here and just the force of the headstock and the tailstock pushing together is going to uh, uh, it, it'll it'll work that way too, but please do not give me one of those comments. I've been I've done hundreds of these things. I kind of know what works best by now, and I also know what doesn't work. Okay, now normally you would take this assembly, and you would put it into the the chuck. This end here would go into the headstock. This end here would go into the tailstock, and you just sort of squeeze it together. Not real hard, but hard enough. Okay. So then when the headstock spins it, well, you can see what's going to happen here. Okay, now, if I was to use this in the metal lathe, which is the only one that works right now, 
I'd have to clamp this end into the into the chuck, which I could, and I and I've done it. It'll 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 work. Uh, but this end will not fit into the <clears throat> number three Morris taper of the of the uh, metal lathe. So I have to use an adapter. So this goes on here. Now it will fit into my metal lathe. Uh, so that's that's what this piece is. But hopefully, hopefully, and this is the plan. The plan is that I'm going to be getting a uh, a small bench top lathe that. It's mainly designed for turning pens. Um, yeah, it's not it's not a heavy duty thing. It's 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 only one fifth the weight of my of my big lathe that's downstairs, and um, and my thinking is that if it's small, I can probably uh, rig up a, a place for it in the back room. You remember I was talking about putting an extra model table back there. Well, that's that's where I would do it. I put a sheet of plywood down on the floor, and and uh, I've got a small, a small uh, dust collector that I can hook up to it, and uh, yeah, at least that's that's sort of my thinking right now. Um, but at any rate, maybe in the meantime, before I do that, I can take this downstairs and just run it through the metal lathe. Now the problem with the metal lathe is that it's it's only designed to go straight across. Okay. And you're you're not going to have any pizzazz. Like where's Tennessee Jim's pen here? Okay, now you, you can see here. There's a, there's a little bit of shape to it, like it's kind of kind of arced. Okay, well that's what you want. You don't want this just straight across. And uh, anyway, I call this Tennessee Jim's pen because he gave me this uh, piece of uh, black palm, and uh, I turned it down to what you see right here. It's it's actually quite interesting very interesting wood that is um, okay well, all right enough about this so that's that's the latest on the pen now uh, let's uh, get on with the model ship here okay I have bad news and I have good news the bad news is time is really getting away on us but the good news is the temperature has really warmed up here uh, yeah, probably by one o'clock we're gonna have water running off my car. That's all right. Okay, now, I have something that's a little bit embarrassing that I have to talk about right now. And got a comment last night from one of the viewers, and he, he says, why didn't you just paint this first and then glue it on here and then assemble the... I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking of. I, I, my brain must have been froze up. I mean, maybe I've been sniffing too much of this glue or something. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, there's no use uh, beating that to death. It's glued down. It's not coming off. We're just going to have to make the best of it. But that's what I should have done. I should have gone ahead and painted this like I had wanted to. Maybe assemble the entire thing. Yeah, I think the assemble this is all one module here, and then and then stick it, stick the whole thing down. Okay, let's not talk about that anymore. Let's just move on here. Um, okay, we got this. We got this done here. In step 23, uh, the next thing it wants us to do is deal with this. Now, do we want to deal with this right now before this is painted? I would say no. Uh, <clears throat> okay, well, what I, want, what I want to do with this is I want to spray the 19 all the way around the splinter rail, inside and out. And also, I think the, the 19 should be sprayed on the sides here, on, on this part here. Uh, I think that this would probably, this is probably going to be some kind of decking. I guess I could page ahead to find out. You know, we were wondering what this was for yesterday. Well, obviously it's for this goes in here somehow. There we go. Locks into place. Um, you know, I, I know I bad mouth trumpeter about their instruction manual, but I sure got to give them credit for their parts fit. Yeah. Well, well I had it. I was just going to try and assemble the other piece now. They fit too good. 
Kind of like the story of my army tanks that I told you two or three times already. Okay, now let's be careful that we don't break off the photo etch. Okay, yeah, that's all going to go together like that. So it, it kind of looks like the picture, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, this this should all be assembled after it's after it's painted. So maybe what we should do is, uh, well, why don't we get the rest of the parts for for step twenty three, and then we've got everything. There's a, a G twenty nine, G twenty eight. Uh, there's some kind of photo etch that has to be. Oh my goodness, this is going to be delicate. When I first saw this picture here earlier this morning, I thought that was a couple of plastic parts, uh, kind of kind of like these ones that we put on a while ago. Um, I thought it was the same sort of thing, but this is photo etch. That is going to be really delicate. Um, yeah, and it's going to have to be put on after everything is assembled and painted, and uh, and then the photo etch will have to be painted, I guess, with a brush. Um, well, we'll worry about that when we come to it. Let's get our G2029 and G28. Now our sprue pen can be even bigger. Okay, now we need G1 and G3. And looking at them here, they appear to be mirror image to each other. So that's probably why they have different numbers. So the folding line probably has us bending this this bottom. Well, you know what, When we once I nip these off, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and nip these off. And then we'll... Uh, Probably use Andy's uh, photo etch bender on this. I would think that would be the safest. Yeah, they're such big parts. If I try to do it in the um, Tamiya uh, photo etch plier, there's a chance that I could bend something out of shape. So, um, okay, stop thinking about it and start doing it. Okay, I know that I said I wasn't going to show nipping this off with the macro lens, but I just wanted to show something here. You, you see where this tab hooks onto the part. And normally what you can do is you can drag your your cutter and there there's the the tab is recessed down and it's it's just a little bit tiny bit lower than the part. In other words the part is thicker. Now this is this is the one of the ones we need. This is the number three obviously. But this tab, I just nipped it off here a moment ago, I was noticing is the same thickness as this. In other words, when you're dragging your, your cutter across, you just can't feel anything there. So what I find is if I, if I put my cutter at a bit of an angle, like this, and sort of hook it in, and then just sort of rock it over. Okay, then I generally don't end up slicing off part of the part. Okay. I think we've got that one now. I've got all the other tabs. Now this this piece that I'm touching right now is, is thicker than this. So that means this is going to be extremely flimsy. It's going to be interesting to see you know how we make out with it. I think I missed this tab right here. I'm going to have to swing it around to get it. I'm going to do this off camera. Okay now. This is piece number G3. And I can see how it is supposed to be bent. It looks like it gets bent right about where this thicker post is. And uh, part of the window. 
and then it looks like this this little back section gets bent in. I guess the idea is that this bigger section is supposed to go down down in here, and then the little section right here that we would bend it probably only be about a millimeter sort of folds in right here. Now I haven't I haven't tried this yet to see how how it's going to fit. Actually, it, it won't fit unless this is bent. But I was looking and I'm not seeing any folding lines. So let me see if I can turn this over. I, I didn't look on the other side yet. No, there there is no, there are no folding lines. Usually there's like there's a little line. Usually it's on it's on the side the same side that has the part numbers. So this is going to be really difficult to bend right in the center of this. I'm, I'm just wondering if possibly there was a, an oversight on somebody's part here when this piece of photo etch was, was drawn out. Um, this is going to be hard. This is, I'm wondering if this is one of those cases that is beyond my, you might call it, expertise. Let's get Andy's bender here and see if the, we can s stick this in here and See, we, we, I can't bend this post if there's no folding line down the middle of it. Now as for our sunrise this morning. Well, there was no sunrise. It just got light out. And uh, yeah, our walkers came and our walkers left. And that overpass, that pedestrian overpass that you've been seeing, you're going to get to see it in tomorrow's episode, all being well, from the other side. Because I used my car today for the first time in just over four weeks. Yeah. Anyway, I was noticing on the odometer this morning, when I, or this afternoon, I guess, when I got in it, and it said 4,300 kilometers. That'd be like, uh, oh, what, 2,500 miles? I, you know, that, that car is a, a brand new old car. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Uh, okay, enough about my car. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about uh, where I went in uh, tomorrow's episode. Well, I guess I'm sort of going to give you a hint here uh, when I close today's episode off. So, anyway, that's it for this morning's sunrise. Nothing special. Well, a lot has happened here in the last hour and a half. After I shot the last scene with this, I got on the phone and I phoned the place that has the lathe here in Winnipeg. And, uh, yeah, they had two just came in the back door this morning. <laughs> well, actually they might have because they were still on the pallet when I had to drive around the back where to pick it up. So, uh, anyway, uh, bottom line is I am out of time and I am out of breath. And the reason I'm out of breath is because I just wrestled it out of the back of my car and into the house but you're not going to have be able to see that until tomorrow because i'm going to have to wrap today's episode up uh yeah thanks for watching everybody and all being well we'll see you tomorrow and we might be able to turn our pen we'll see what happens uh yeah we'll see what happens see you tomorrow <laughs>